here! My name is Charlie and welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be doing my May monthly reading wrap up and I'm going to be doing it in the chart style -y. so what I'll do is I'll tell you all the books that I've read and I will but the ones outside of the top 10 I won't go into a lot of detail about because that way I've got more time to focus on the books I actually really loved so yeah um, without further ado I'm going to dive right into it oh yeah also I tell you a top of the flops I have a top of the flops which is like the one that least worked for me that month um, sometimes it's a bad book, sometimes it just wasn't for me. So, um, yeah. Right. So, yeah, this month I read a total of 17 books and two short stories. Four of the um, books that I, of, of, this, of the 17 were actually poetry collections, and I'm not going to include these in my top 10 because it would, again, make the top 10 too, um, too long, but I will go through them quickly with you. I read a reread Wild Embers. That wouldn't be in it at the chart anyway because it's a reread and I don't include rereads in my chart bookish charts. This was amazing. It was wonderful. I reread it for Mental Health a thon, um, and it also counted for the Asian Readathon. So yeah, it was really wonderful. I've spoken about this numerous times, and um, it's just basically it just it's like self it's like self love poetry, and also she talks about mental health issues as well about um, like coping with mental illnesses and stuff. And she's just such an amazing poet, Nikita Gill is wonderful, and highly recommend this collection. Then next also I read um, Intox Intoxicated Mides by Jade Millard. Um, this was recommended to me by um, Nicole from Beautiful Grace Books. This was a good collection, but I feel like it's aimed at a slightly younger audience than me because a lot of it's like some of it's like coming of age kind of stuff, which is really really good. And there's the mental health representation in here is really really wonderful. But I think if you're sort of my age, you might not as get as much from it. So that is the only thing I will say from it about this. But it was still a really good collection, and I did enjoy the poetry in it. Um, yeah. But my top favorite, my top two favorite poetry collections I read this month will be no surprise um, to you. It was um, one was the Girl Aquarium by Jen Campbell, and um, this was amazing. This talks about this is her observations in like female of bo female bodies and and. Like, it's got loads of, like, magical realism elements in here, and it's just so wonderful. I loved it so, so much. Um, uh, there are a few that really, really connected with me. I think I will probably talk about this in a future video. I'm going to be doing a, a poetry, like, favourite soon. So, um, yeah, this was just brilliant. So the next poem, um, poetry, poetry, poetry collection I want to show you is, um, is Night Sky of Exit Wounds by Ocean Vuong. This poetry collection was beautiful. Um, it talks about numerous different themes, which again I'll talk about in the future video. But my favourite one was um, obeyed, to, "Obeyed with the Burning City," and this is a poem about how armed forces played Berlin's White Christmas as a code to begin the evacuation of American and Vietnamese um, refugees, um, like they using a helicopter in Saigon. Just really like the, obviously the, the the White Christmas song is very jarring against what you're hearing about. The evacuation and stuff it's very powerful it's just so powerful and wonderful and there are numerous poems in here which i just loved so so much um yeah so that was definitely one of my favorites um i'm gonna launch into the other ones as well i'll talk to you about the other ones that aren't in my top 10. i've got murakami's birthday girl this is a short story collection that i read and um, just about a girl who's a, wait a waitress in a restaurant and it's got like magical realism elements in it it's quite sweet very good i recommend it it's quite good it was only 1.99 so can't go wrong and then you've got Kazuo Shiguri's Comrade of Sunshine. This is a bit quirky and um, it's quite a bit weird, but it's, it was good. I enjoyed it. And this is about a guy called, what's his name? Ray turns up to visit his old university friend Charlie. Um, and um, yeah, and it's kind of like he's trying to, he's, his, his friend Charlie wants him to sort of like help with his marriage, basically. Then I've read, oh, you can see my receipt. <laughs> I read Death Note. This is um, the number two in my, the series. And I enjoyed it, it was really, really good. Um, yeah, not in my top 10, but really, really good. I've talked about Death Note in previous videos, so I will link my series video and all down below so um, you can watch if you're interested in finding out what that's about. Then you've got The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This so nearly made my top 10, um, but unfortunately it did not because there were other books that I loved more but um i did really really enjoy this this is about uh this is about esther greenwood who's sort of in new york and it starts it's very slow burning to start with even though it's only very short um and she's sort of like you sort of hear about her like going to like was it university or something and then and with her like 
with her friends um, and then something happens halfway through and with to do with her mental health and it sort of spirals downwards and I think the second half of the book worked so much better than the first half for me but I how, I loved the writing of this I really really enjoyed reading it it was just so beautiful but yeah um, and the mental health representation is just gorgeous I, th I personally think um, but yeah this has got like suicide uh, like triggers for like trigger warnings for suicide and things like that in here so be warned if you enter into it it's not like obviously a happy book but it's not meant to be so my top of the flops was The Secret History by Donna Tartt this was one um, that is my bookish poster um, one uh, and I read, buddy read this with Simone from me Simone and I, I know she's talked about this in a video so I'll link her channel down below and stuff and um, this is like basically about like this group of like of like 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 these are it's a, a group of like of, uh, university students and it's all very highbrow and, and they're very like they, a lot of them like high society um kind of people and um sort of their relationships initially but then and I think it's it's just so like it's very very slow slow burn of a book there is something that happens about I think it's like 200 pages in the thing happens this is a 600 page book and um, so the thing happens about 200 pages in which I'm not going to tell you what it is um, and it's sort of the power of these people and how they try and get away with the things that they get away with um, and how like money can influence people I guess I right this isn't a bad book and I'm hoping that that I enjoyed I'm gonna read the Goldfinch with um that's the main thing we're gonna try for, to read the Goldfinch actually with Sarah actually as well from my true shelf but isn't it just it just was very very slow paced and every little bit they feed you it's just so slow and the characters are super unlikable which I think obviously they're meant to be but yeah this just yeah I did actually enjoy it more by the time I got to the end of the book I did actually enjoy it more but then I think it's because I've been reading it so long, I was kind of used to it. So I think it might, it, obviously so, lots of people love this book, so you might love it too. But for me it wasn't like a favourite and it definitely felt like a chore trying to get through it. And I don't know if it was, if it hadn't been on my bookish poster, I don't know whether I would have carried on reading it. It probably would have been a DNF potentially. So um, just go into that be, with, like, be mindful that it's very, very slow going. So yeah, like me. <laughs> right. Number 10 spot, I've got The Handmaid's Tale um, by Margaret Atwood. This is like a classic, obviously. Um, and this is about a, a dystopic future where women don't have any rights over their own bodies. It's very timely at the moment. I know that April from Getting Hooker With It is running a like um, read-along next month, which I can't participate in because I've just literally watched... I've just literally read this, but I will be trying to watch the show, um, so to, in support, obviously. Um, but yeah, so... I, I did really really enjoy this, this is a really really powerful and important story and if there were other books that like I like different times I think this this could have made higher up in my in my ranks but yeah this was um there's lots and lots of it's quite obviously it's very violent and it's a very brutal book and it, as a result it's like quite hard to get through but I, I know then obviously like how important it is it's like I said it's a very important story of, um, especially like I said at the moment with everything that's going on in over, all over the world with women's rights potentially being like trying to be taken away from everybody so um, yeah either which way and it's one I definitely will reread in the future so yeah that's that one then we've got at number nine I think number nine is R. Doris by Charles Heathcote I read this directly after my favourite book so this was I honestly I was I was worried for this little book because I was thinking I didn't know how it was gonna like like fit in and stuff because you know when you've read a book that you love like literally the the book that's gonna be at the, my number one spot is like I think it's like even potentially a top to flames so reading this next to it I was thinking oh poor Doris like I don't know how it's gonna be but this was really like well done it's about obviously Doris um, and it's told from the perspective of our of Harold <laughs> and it's kind of like like to me like this is um so these are like older generational people and yeah, they're like retired folk and um, and it's just it was really perky and really funny it kind of gave me mrs like in the uk if you're in the uk you'll get these references if you're not i'm sorry um like um 
hyacinth bouquet kind of vibes mixed with like um oh what's his face victor meldrew kind of vibes with, um and slash last of the summer wine kind of vibes and um i love the references in this book there's loads of like qu quirky little references to different um like tv shows and other things which and it's just really like the humor is really really spot on it was just really a gentle kind of quirky read and I just really, I really, really enjoyed it. So it had to be in my top ten, and I definitely like recommend it. Charles Heathcote is the Charlie is um has got his own book channel, and I'll link his channel down below. Um, I want to read now next on the list of this after this is Indisputably Doris, so I definitely will be picking this up potentially for my mum because I know she wants to read this as well. So, yeah, that's that one. <laughs> right, the next one, number eight, is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. This is so famous, I don't even know whether I really need to say too much about it, but in case you don't know, this is about a guy that's a, um, a lawyer, um, so it's sort of the story of Scout um, and her father, Atticus Finch, that's right, <laughs> my brain, um, and her father's like a lawyer and he gets this case about a, a guy who's been accused um, of a crime he didn't commit, and it's sort of like how Scout is coming to terms with, like, She's like watching like these things unfold in front of her, and it's really just so beautiful. It's just a famous, famous book, and I really, really enjoyed it. I know this is Simone from me, Simone and I. It's one of her favourite books of all time. One of her, it's definitely one of her favourite classics. And I can see why. I'm so pleased I read this. I bloody read this with my sister Emily, and yeah, really, really beautiful story. And I definitely, again, will reread it. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a long one this month. What I want to talk to you about is The Kite Runner by Khalid Hassini. This is the second Khalid Hassini book that I have read with my sister Emily and um, I'll link Emily's channel down below. This is about 12 year old Amir and his like a coming, like it's not a coming of age story but it's him, him growing up in Afghanistan and then um, there's something that happens in, within his family um, and it changes everything. This has got like Basically this is like about lies and about guilt and how it can affect um, the whole families and it's just very very powerful, the writing is gorgeous, I'd, I buddy read this with Chrissy from The Return Cart, Emily obviously and Clint from Reads Reader so again I'll link my channels down below and we discussed all this and it was just so wonderful, it was just such a beautiful book and I highly recommend it so that is that. Um, the next one is, and in at number 7 is um, it's a funny, it's kind of a funny story by Ned Vecini. This is about a, again a guy called Craig. He's a teenager, and um, he's he's suicidal, and um, he sort of checks into this um, like, like mental like health like unit, um, he's, and it's sort of what happens then. There was like humour in this, and it's very very sweet, and I just loved 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 it. Like there were so many things that I connected to, connected to, which sounds very brutal, but everyone has hard times in their life and especially like with when he talks about cycling and um, when, like when you're an anxious feelings and when your brain is going and um, he calls it the cycling and I just thought that was like just so wonderful a way to describe when you're trapped in those moments and um, because it's 100% true it's a beautiful book and if you haven't read it please do so that is that. Next one is a novella by um, Miko Kamakami and it's called Miss I Sandwich this is about a um, a guy called I can't remember his name of the got the the character, but it's a teenage guy, and he basically has this crush on a girl um, that's working in this like in like a I think it's just working in like a grocery store or something, but in the in the sandwich section, and she's making sandwiches, and he, and he calls her Miss Ice Sandwich, and it's sort of like again, it's sort of like a teenager, sort of like it's just beautiful, it's just. Gorgeous, 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 and I really, really love this. And um, thank you to Katie from Books and Things for recommending it. And um, yeah, I think it's like one of my favourite translation fictions that I read so far this year. It's beautiful. Do check it out. It's quirky and funny and it's gorgeous. This one I listened to on audiobook, but I've got the physical copy to show you. It's Stardust by Neil Gaiman. It's um, about the again, it's about this, this character called um, Tristan, Tristan Thorne, and he's growing up. Um, he's He's, oh, excuse me. He's sort of he's in love with this girl called lady called Victoria. He has this massive, massive crush on this girl, lady called Victoria, and he really, really wants to like go out with her and then potentially marry her. Um, and but she she's sort of, like dangling him a little bit on a string, and she says, well, if you go in, if you catch this, um, they see a, a shooting star, and she said, if you bring that star to me, 
then I will marry you. So then Tristan goes on a quest to get the star. And it's all the things that in, um, uh, ensue from there. And it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I loved reading the book. I've seen the film before. I want to rewatch the film. It's just gorgeous. And this is the second um, Neil Gaiman book I've been reading this month. I'm still reading American Gods. I'm still working my way through it slowly but surely. But yeah, this was beautiful. And the audiobook was amazing. It was from um, the audio library. So I highly recommend that as well. This is um, Asha and the Spirit Bird by Jaspinda... Jasbinda Bilan. Again, I read this for Asian Readathon. I read also read The Kite Runner and also Miko Kawakami's for the Asian Readathon. Um, and this is about a girl called Asha who's growing up in the, a village just outside of Nepal. I think that's right. She's in, in, near, the, near the mountains. And her father has gone missing and they don't know what's happened to him. He's basically... He, he used to write letters and send money to the family and he stopped doing that. So then the money has dried... At, that he, obviously the family are then poor, left poor because they don't have any money and the, these people come to collect the money, these nasty people. And so then Asha and her friend Jeevan, I think that's right, Jeevan, go, they go off to find what's happened to the father. And it's like an adventure story and there's like a little, there's, it's got magical realism because there's a, a little spirit bird that appears and there's other things that happen. And it's beautiful, it's so, so gorgeous. I loved it, loved it, loved it. And... It's just such a wonderful middle grade, so I highly, highly recommend it for the children and for the adults. Um, yeah, and look at that cover. Look how gorgeous it is. Joint sec so there'll be there's two books I that are in second place, fighting for second place. They're quite different books. Um, the Long Way Down is um, by Jason Reynolds, which I just spoke about in my favourites, so I will link that video down below. I don't want to talk about it anymore, because otherwise we're going on too much. It's a t book told in verse, and it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And also in at number two was She Called Me Woman by, um, by a, it's edited by Azina Mohamed Chitra Najaran Rafit Aliou and it's beautiful, um, it's got the stories of, I think it's like 23, um, 25 um, like accounts of queer Nigerian folk, like, ladies and it's, it's like kind of like their experiences of growing up in Nigeria and being LGBTQ, um, it's just so amazing. There's like so so many different, such a lot of different variety to these stories. It talks about not only does it talk about um, within the queer, their own queer, queer differences within their own queer communities, but it also talks about families and um, sort of roles that within um, that each it, it, they each play. It's just so so gorgeous. This is definitely my favourite non-fiction of the year so far. I highly, highly recommend it. It's really, really made me think so many things, and it's just gorgeous, 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 gorgeous book. And yeah, that is that one. And in at the number one spot is Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. And this is such a beautiful book, and it's about the um, Bell Boys, um, who are bu uh, brothers, who are, and it's their gro their tale of growing up, um, in this like a suburban town in Australia. But there's so much to this book. Eli is um, 12 years old at the start of the book and August is what, just one year older, one year older and he is the wiser um, brother and he basically is really protective of Eli, obviously, as you would expect and it's um, you find out about their past they've come from a really, really rough background and it's how they sort of find, he, Eli always manages to find, no matter what situation they're in because as they find themselves in a lot of situations he always finds hope, no matter what, and I just loved that about Eli. Eli was such a gorgeous character, and like I said, and August is mute and does not talk. And even though August doesn't talk, he is wise, and Eli looks up to him, and he is very protective of Eli. And um, and he, I remember in one of the things I think he said, there's so many quotes to this book that I actually like. I just want to go back and retab and quote everything, um, because he says even though he doesn't talk, it, he expresses himself kind of better than, than, Eli, than, than Eli in some respects because, well, Eli expresses himself well. You can, a lot, you can say a lot without saying that many words. And he does it a lot better than I do. <laughs> um, there's so much heart to this book. There's comedy moments, there's moments of, that grip you and make you feel genuine jeopardy for the characters. Um, they've, they're basically the mother and, and stepfather um, uh, like sell drugs and stuff and they've got for a babysitter they've got this character called Slim who is so brilliant and um, he's this really funny um character and he's an ex-con he was accused of murder he's jailed he's a famous ex-con in, the, in their neighborhood um, and he was kind of like they used to call I think they called him the Houdini of 
of their je of the jail, which I can't remember the name of the jail, but um, and he it was famous for escaping. And he was just his that character was brilliant, and he um had a massive Slim had a massive influence on Eli, and um. Now, like I said, Eli is, is, is the storyteller and he tells you the book. He is the whole, he's the narrator of this story. Yeah, this was just so, so wonderful. Um, there's dark moments, there's raw moments, there's scary moments. There's moments when you gasp and it, the story goes off in ways that you wouldn't expect. Um, I know Matthew Shirappa and Jacqueline from Six Minutes for me love this book and they were the ones that sort of like recommended it to me. And I 100% see why. It's just beautiful. I it would be quite amusing if this is my favourite book of the year because last year um, an Australian fi um, fiction was, um, you guys know, Flames I loved. And I really honestly think that nothing will ever won't be able to top it. There's literary references in here. There's so, so much in here. It was just so wonderful and I want to hug this book and never let it go. And you know when you have that feeling about a book, you just want to tell get everyone to read it? That is how I feel about this. So if you're new to my channel, um, that is, so this is the end of my wrap-up. Um, if you're new to my channel, I'm going to carry on hugging the, the book. If you're new to my channel, um, I post videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. So if you're new, that is when you'll find me. Um, and yeah, hope you have a good month. And let me know what your favourites, um, your bookish favourites were this month too. Um, thank you and goodbye. Bye!